Hello Techies, welcome to Automation Anywhere RPA video tutorials. This is part 11. In this session, we will work with the loop commands. Loop commands are some of the most powerful commands in Automation Anywhere. These loop commands are used to create loop structure in automation tasks to automate the repetitive tasks or logistics. If you see on my screen that we're having a lo lot of loop subcommands, that is start loop, end loop, exit loop, continue loop, or these are the four types of loop structures that are providing by the loop commands. And if you see the below things, times, list, condition, each row in, a, in an Excel data set, each row in an internet explorer table, each row in an SQL query data set, each file in a folder, each folder in a folder again. If you see, each row in a CSV file, each email message on server, each node in an XML data set. These are all the subcommands that what we're having. These subcommands are used for the iterative purpose, okay? But all these subcommands I'm not going to explain in the same session. I will explain only few of the session that is times, list, condition. These subcommands, loop subcommands I'm going to explain you in this session. Now, let me switch to Automation Anywhere Enterprise, enterprise Client that now we are in the enterprise client workbench. I will show you how to use the loop commands. If you see on my left hand side, we have the commands. Under that, you will find loop commands over here, right? For today, what we are going to discuss, we are going to be discussing about the times. Before that, I will explain you one of the scenario. Okay, so what is the scenario? I want to write the numbers from 1 to 10. Okay, how can I go ahead and do that? First of all, in real time, you know, we have to initialize the value with zero, and then we're going to be looping that for 10 times by incrementing by one. Okay, how many times that we have to do? 10 times to display the value for, uh, you know, one to 10, right? The number of times, if you see, the first of all, if you see there's a pop-up loop, select the loop command, we have to start the command, start loop command, and then the number of iterations or the times that I'm going to give 10 times. I'm going to looping for 10 times and then I'm going to saving it. If you see on my screen, that is, you know, if you, you can see the start loop and then loop automatically is coming over there. Okay. And if you see start loop 10 times, I'm just giving it. And now I want to display the numbers, right? So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a variable or uh, variable operations, right? So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm having a pop-up operations, right? We are having prompt. We can go for the prompt, or else just now we are going for the variable operations. Just let me go and drag and drop this variable onto my screen. If you see over here, first of all, I'm defining a variable. We'll, uh, you know, in the previous sessions, I have not explained this variable, but I will explain you once again in the next part of the session. Okay, if you see the select variable, I'm going to use use variables, not system variables. We're having two things, but I'm not using, uh, you know, system variables. I'm just using using user variables. And you can see there's the clipboard. I'm going to use the clipboard. When I'm selecting this, okay, select operation. We are going to be on, uh, assigning it or reinitialize it, but the reinitialize has been disabled because of whenever you are having my list variable, you are going to be reinitialize that one. Okay. Now the initial value is zero that I'm going to give it as zero. Why I am going to give it zero? I want to display starting the variable initializing zero. I want to display from starting from one to 10, right? And after that, I have to increment that. That's a reason starting with zero. Uh, I have to drag and drop to the most because topmost because first I have to inflate the variable. And then if you see over here, the variable for the operation is zero. 
Now what I want to display, I want to show, I want to increment the variable by one. How can I go ahead and do that? I am going to copy that, the same variable. And if you see over here, variable operation, I'm already having clipboard, correct? Uh, in the, if you see here, I am have, uh, you know, given the value zero and I want zero and I have to increment for that clipboard, I want to increment by one. How can I do that? If you see, there's an example, one plus dollar counter dollar in the same way, I have saved the data in the clipboard. So what I'm going to do, dollar clipboard dollar plus what is the increment by one. Um, and then I'm going to saving it in the same clipboard. Okay, I'm going to repeat again, clipboard equal to dollar clipboard plus one. If you see starting value zero, zero is increment by one, that is one is going to be storing over here. In the next time iteration, one, already the value has been stored as one, one plus one equal to two. Like that I'm going to display for multiple times, okay? Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to saving it. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to display the value over there in the uh, you know message box. How can I go ahead and do that? Just I'm going to get the message box on from my commands. If you see, I'm going to drag and drop the message onto my, uh, you know, uh, task. And then I'm just going to display. What I'm going to display, just whatever the value has been stored in the clipboard, I'm going to display that. Okay, if you see the same value. I'm going to say this value as display value. If you see the caption, I'm going to say it as display value. Now I'm going to saving it. I'm say it as loop demo. And I'm click on save. Now let me explain again. I want to display the values from one to 10 by using loop commands, right? So I am first I'm using the first value is the loop. The number uh, by using loop command, I want to uh, iteration for 10 times so that you know I want to display from 1 to 10 values. Let me go ahead, let me run it by clicking F5. It will take a little bit time to run when I click it for the you know uh, F5 from my keyboard, it will automatically start within a within couple of seconds. But when I'm going to click directly from the run, it will automatically takes it to run it. Okay, now if you see, uh, the runtime window has been launched. You can see that one out of six lines has been executing. First one, line one, the variable has been initialized and then it is going to be start looping it. The variable operations and all these things, it is going ahead one by one whenever it is coming. For the first time, it will take a little bit to uh, run this, uh, you know, uh, run this task for the first time. Later on, it will be, you know, it will be very faster. Line number five, it has to display from one. If you see, the value is previously zero plus one is one. Now when I click OK, now the second value goes to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and finally 10. If I click OK, it's end to the loop. Okay, this is number of times that we have given it by using the times. I hope you understand it uh, about the number of times. This is the times. Okay, now in the same way, if you have any real time scenario, if you're going to get from database and number of times that have to iterate, then you're going to use this number of times. Now, I'm going to comment this, nothing but I'm going to disable it. Now we'll go for the list. Let me drag and drop this list onto my screen. If you see, what are the values that we're having in the list? I have to go through the one by one, one by one in the by using the loop condition, loop command. Okay, if you see over here, the loop, select loop, start loop. And if you see the list over here, 
they are my list and I'm going to save it. Uh, now, if you see this list of variables from where it is going to getting from my list. So I have to initialize one of the, uh, you know, variable operations uh, that would, what we have done in the same thing, right? Variable operations. Let me drag and drop variable operations. If you see variable operation, user variables that I'm going for the specify variable, my list of variable. Now, if you see assign, I'm not going to using it under reinitialize. It has been given, right? Now, let me go to reinitialize. What I'm going to do, I'm just giving the values. I'm just giving values and I'm going to add to list. 5, 6, 10, 21. I will give 5 to 6 values, 4, 7. And then I'm going to save it. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I want to display the values. Whatever are there in the variable, it want to go through the loop and then it has to display the values. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, how can I display? I'm just using message box again. Let me drag and drop this message box onto my screen and I'm say display values one by one. Okay. What are the values? that you know from where we will get it dollar my list variable correct if you see the values are there in the my list that's why you know we are going to get it my hyphen list hyphen variable and after that i will say dollar again because of it is going to be storing in that values and you know for each and everything i'm going to display it no i'm going to saving it and let me say this entire task saying as loop domain already there, it's a story there. Let me go ahead, let me run it right now. So what will happen now the variables are there. So that variable has been initialized and then for each and everything that is going to through the loop and it is going to display the values has been given over there. If you see the first value is five and the value is six, 10, next 21, four and seven and the end of the demo, correct? So what it is happening over here, it is going for each and every uh, value in the variable, and then it is going to be displaying it. So without initializing how many, uh, I, I, we don't know how many variables has been, how many values has given in the variable in my list variable that all the values have been going one by one and then we are going to displaying it. So what will happen in real time scenario, there are some of the things have been defined in the, you know, hard coded values like that, you know, if there is a projects or some of the weeks, days like that. At that time, I want to display each and every value and then, you no, know, without initializing the values and the number of times, I don't want to repeat it. At that time, we are going to use this uh, start, uh, you know, list by using list of the loop command that we can go ahead and we can display it. Okay, fine. So I hope you understand about the, you know, times and the list. Now, what I want to do, I want to go for the next condition, next command that is nothing but loop sub command that is condition. Okay, let me go ahead, let me comment this. Nothing but disabling it. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to drag and drop this condition. What is the condition? So if you see in my previous if else command, there's the conditions, if it is two kind of commands, right? In the same way that I'm going to give some of the conditions to execute the remaining lines. If you see over here, I don't have any conditions over here to execute the data, right? To execute this kind of data. For and suppose, I have what are kind of conditions that I have? If there is any file exist or folder exist, if there is any variable exist or not, variable value there or not, okay? At that time, we're going to be, you know, uh, we're going to be executing the command and then only we're going to be displaying some of the messages. Okay, let me go for the variable for the time being. Okay, uh, let me go ahead, let me edit it. If see, if there is any variable, so what is the variable? Let me go to F2 to check it out what are the variables that we are having. Okay, it is responding very slowly. 
Okay, if you see, I am having prompted message will take uh, oh, my list variable only. Okay, if my list variable what are, is, uh, is greater than 10, okay, 10, then only I want to show the message box. Okay, let me show you that one. If you see, in previous one, we are having, if you see over here, the condition uh, start loop list variable, my list variable. I'm having six to seven values I have given over there. But what happened over there? But it is displaying all the values. But I don't want to display all the values. I want to display only the values which are greater than 10. Let me go ahead, let me open the variable operation. If you see over here, 5, 6, 10, 21, 4, 7, right? These are all the values that I have given it, correct? So that the value is greater than 10, then only I'm going to give the message box I want to display. Let me enable it. Based on the condition, I'm going to working it. Okay, let me go ahead, let me run it. You can see the difference for the both the things. I click on the run and it is taking a little bit time to respond. Okay, runtime window has been started. You can see line 13 of 16, which is the value, uh, okay. My list variable is greater than 10. Okay, okay, the my list variable greater than 10. Let me check why, let me give two for the time being, let me go ahead, let me save it. Save and then run it. Line number, okay, five. 6, 10, 21, 4, 7. So my list, okay, while it is going to be using loop while, okay. Just as simple, it's a, we can go to give some kind of condition, fix variable is greater than two, that it is showing all the values. Okay, so my list of variables is two, correct? Is less than two. Let me go ahead and let me do once again. It is going for the loop while. It is just for the condition purpose. Okay, you don't want to confuse much more. This is only using for the condition purpose where you are going to be using these values. If you see, that is coming as a while loop and then it will be displaying. If you see all the values that is greater than, uh, there's no values less than two. That's the reason it is not displaying anything. Uh, and it is not displaying any values over here. This is not, uh, the less than two values are not there, that's why it is not satisfying, and then it is dropping off. Okay, in the next session, we will explain about the each row in an Excel data set, or each row in the Internet Explorer data set, SQL query data set, each file in a folder, or each file in a folder in a folder, each row in a CSV or slash text, email message on the servers, notes, uh, in an XML data set. All these loop sub commands we'll see in the next session. If you're having any queries related to this concept, please post them in the comment section. Thank you for watching Automation Anywhere RPA video tutorials. I will see you in the next session. Till then, bye-bye.